everybody. Today's video is a little special. We will be discussing the oohs and the ahs of the gaming industry over the past few years, and that is console versus PC gaming. We will be looking at this video and giving it our hot take. Nothing to do, but to get right into it. Yo, I'm Brian P, and you're watching Disney Channel. Gaming. This statement here implies that PC requires a lot of expensive materials, and even more so, that the community is a bunch of elitists. One of the beauties about PC gaming is that you can spend as much or as little money as you want, and to make the graphics better or worse than they would be on console. After getting my PC set up, I have to do no more than turn it on. PC gaming is far from a rabbit hole. It's not very confusing after you learn about all the parts or buy a pre-build at any price, and especially now it's pretty easy to get out of PC gaming with all the cryptocurrency craze, and you could probably sell your graphics card for more than you bought it for if the purchase was before a year ago. The video is aimed at the guys who are on console and considering PC gaming. It may not be the best idea to feed these lies into their head, and let them discover the platform for themselves rather than scaring them off with ghost stories. These were your only experiences with PC until a year ago. No wonder that there was all of this misinformation being spread. PC gaming was a completely different scene back then. Back in the day, they got none of the multiplats and only had exclusives to support themselves with. You did not need to buy special parts to play the games. The realm has changed a lot, and for better or for worse, the world of PC gaming is now almost as a trend with the rise of Twitch streamers all playing on PC is what the PC scene is like right now. But when Back in the PS1 era, PC was not even considered a major gaming platform, and I can see why you jumped ship from a small band of arena shooters to a bigger console that was trending at the time. But as I said earlier, times have changed and the tables have turned. It was just a if all you want was 1080p at 60 frames per second, I am surprised that you are preaching against PC for console newcomers. Still, with the Xbox One and PS4, there are very little games offer 1080p at 60fps on the base consoles. If you are dropping the money for the X or the PS4 Pro, at that point you should be getting into PC. You could get even more power than the X for less than the cost of it. I didn't think that point. I agree with you here. All of the wild wow moments of the current generation, in terms of graphics, have been on the PC. There have been great exclusive titles for the PS4 that just blew me away in terms of the gameplay and mechanics, but there was not much there in terms of graphics-wise. I personally do not care about the graphics in a game as long as it is good, but also, lots of the more innovative experiences have been on PC. Not to hop on the bandwagon here, but almost every Battle Royale game except for Fortnite has been exclusive to the PC. PUBG for the Xbox is a different story, but it's an example of a game that was set to be a PC exclusive that had a poor launch on the consoles and ruined the image of that game for the majority of the console gamers, but that is a different story. The lesson learned there is that some games are just not meant for the consoles and should stick to the PC, like, unfortunately, PUBG. I will not want to keep games from certain gamers, but I want every game to be good on the platform that it comes to. I'm glad that you've noticed the truth that still holds today. Gamers have been focusing on improving graphics on the consoles rather than the frame rates and the resolution, which makes for a smooth experience, but they're trying to be something visually stunning, but they fail at getting their game to work in a stable state. If you've learned all of this research, then you should probably know that you can get something to perform smoothly on any budget, but it's the graphics there that you would need better cards for. If you do not care about the graphics and a console is a little too expensive for you, then a PC would be a great investment. You could get one for the same price as a console, maybe a little less, and it would be a better long-term investment. Even if your card could not run the game at lows, there are always ways with a little bit of work in the files to turn down the game even more to what you need to play it. A nice PC is just as expensive as the console at launch. If you were to pay $500 for a PC or $300 for a console of the same power, things look like the console would be the better investment. But you have to factor in on console you have to pay $60 for online a year, buy a few controllers for $80 a piece, and buy games at full price with no alternatives. Whenever I bought a PS4, I had to spend as much money on the controllers as I did the actual console. I need more controllers than most so I could play with my friends. I need to spend a lot of cash that could have just been avoided. The console is out of use when the generation is over, and while with the PC you could just upgrade the parts with less budget than upgrading consoles at the time of launch. And it's also perfectly relevant to buy a PC at less than the cost of a console, with the only sacrifices being some graphical fidelity in a few frames. It all comes down to how much you really care about the graphics and performance and the money that you can put up for it. I agree with your point that it costs a lot of money to play the games on highest resolution with max frames and ultra graphics. What I do not agree on is that stuff costs the same amount as a console cannot absolutely destroy it. While it may be just a little bit better, you can still get the full experience and it all depends what you want to do. You know. 
I hope that you know that physics is a physics engine for shooter games and does not determine how the graphics look at all. Also, mid-level builds will completely crush the consoles. And if you really need ultra settings, that is good for you, but not everyone does. And most people, frankly, won't even notice. It's I said earlier, not everybody wants nor needs to have the best graphics in the industry right now. Okay, so this is irrelevant to the video, but I just want to say something that really drives me crazy. I do not like how people base the things off graphics. I mean, I think people should do it like I do. I mean, of course, some people aren't going to do it because obviously I'm not the con controller of everyone. But I recommend trying this. If a game has more than four colors and the screen doesn't hurt your eyes, uh, most of the time, the graphics get a 9 out of 10. I mean, it depends. I mean, not only not if it, out of 10 if it's something like Undertale and you have 8-bit, but it doesn't hurt your eyes as more than four colors and the rest of the game makes up for it. But if you have a crappy game with crappy ga graphics, it's gonna suck. Yeah. It is honestly not very worth it anyways. Ultra settings are not very worth it at all and usually eat up about half of your frames. Be upgrading when the satisfaction is no longer there. I don't How's that nothing but good for the consumer? It's great to know that there is I no longer need to upgrade my build after I have something that satisfies what I need. I won't leave well, then I suppose you never met me. Because unlike a lot of always better technology and is there for you when it's not satisfying your needs. Excuse not too many people need to have the top of the top as it is not really offered too many benefits. On behalf of most people, we do not need to have all the highest level parts in the best settings. While it's nice to have better performance, I still focus more on the games as a whole than a long string of numbers in the top corner.